Question 151. What is the main reason why a nurse raises three of the four side rails on the bed of a 63-year-old client who has had surgery for a fractured hip? A. As a safety measure because of the client's age. B. Because older adults should use side rails for safety. C. To be used as handholds to facilitate the client's ability to move in bed. D. Because older adults often are disoriented for several days after anesthesia. The correct answer, C. To be used as handholds to facilitate the client's ability to move in bed. Rationale. Side rails can help clients increase their movement in bed. They are immovable objects that provide a handhold for leverage when changing positions. Question 152. A four and one half year old child is brought to the emergency department with a fractured tibia. Which type of fracture should the nurse anticipate will be diagnosed because it is the most frequently encountered fracture in children of this age? A. Green stick. B. Transverse. C. Compound. D. Comminuted. The correct answer, a green stick. Rationale. Ossification of the long bones is incomplete in childhood, children's bones can flex to about a 45 degree angle before breaking. When the bone is ungulated beyond 45 degrees, the compressed side bends and the torsion side breaks, green stick fracture. Question 153. A healthcare provider prescribes transdermal fentanyl, Dirigsic, 25 microgram per hour every 72 hours. What is most important for the nurse to do during the first 24 hours after starting the fentanyl? A. Titrate the dose until pain is tolerable. B. Manage pain with oral pain medication. C. Assess the client for anticholinergic side effects. D. Take with food to reduce the risk of gastrointestinal upset. The correct answer, B. Manage pain with oral pain medication. Rationale. It takes 24 hours to reach the peak effect of transdermal fentanyl, Dirigsic. Oral pain medication may be necessary to support client comfort until the fentanyl reaches its peak effect. Question 154. A client enters the emergency department, reporting shortness of breath and epigastric distress. What should be the triage nurse's first intervention? A. Assess vital signs. B. Insert a saline lock. C. Place client on oxygen. D. Draw blood for troponins. The correct answer, A. Assess vital signs. Rationale. Assessment is the first step of the nursing process, and vital signs provide vital information about the client's cardiopulmonary status. Question 155. A client is in the intensive care unit after sustaining a T2 spinal cord injury. Which priority interventions should the nurse include in the client's plan of care? Select all that apply. A. Minimizing environmental stimuli. B. Assessing for respiratory complications. C. Monitoring and maintaining blood pressure. D. Initiating a bowel and bladder training program. E. Discussing long-term treatment plans with the family. The correct answer, B, and C. Rationale. B. Individuals with spinal cord injury, particularly injury higher in the vertebral column, remain unstable for several weeks after the injury. Maintaining a patent airway is a priority. C. Physiologic instability during the first several weeks after injury results in fluctuating vital signs, including blood pressure readings. Question 156. 
a client is scheduled for a vacuum aspiration abortion to terminate a pregnancy. What should the nurse's teaching plan include? A. It is a lengthy procedure but will cause no pain. B. Both she and the father must sign the consent form. C. An elevated temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or more should be reported immediately. D. She will experience a heavy menstrual flow for one to two weeks after the procedure. The correct answer, C. An elevated temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or more should be reported immediately. Rationale. The elevated temperature may be indicative of an infection, if so, immediate treatment, probably with antibiotics, is required. Question 157. A client asks for and receives instruction regarding birth control methods. She elects to use a diaphragm with a spermicide. What disadvantage of using a diaphragm should be explained to the client? It fails half the time when used alone. B. It is physically uncomfortable when in place. C. Thrombus formation and pulmonary emboli may occur. D. Some women find insertion and removal to be objectionable. The correct answer, some women find insertion and removal to be objectionable. Rationale. This is an objection of some women that the nurse must consider when providing counseling about the diaphragm. Question 158. A client's sputum smears for acid fast bacillus, AFB, are positive, and transmission-based precautions are instituted. What should the nurse teach family members to do? A. Avoid contact with objects in the room. B. Limit their contact with non-exposed people. C. Put on a gown and gloves before going into the room. D. Wear a high-efficiency particulate respirator when visiting. The correct answer, D. Wear a high-efficiency particulate respirator when visiting. Rationale. Tubercle bacilli are transmitted through airborne droplets, therefore, Respiratory isolation with an ultrafilter mask is necessary. Question 159. A healthcare provider prescribes psyllium, metamucil, 3.5 gram twice a day for constipation. What is most important for the nurse to teach this client? A. Urine may be discolored. B. Each dose should be taken with a full glass of water. C. Use only when necessary because it can cause dependence. D. Daily use may inhibit the absorption of some fat-soluble vitamins. The correct answer, B. Each dose should be taken with a full glass of water. Rationale. Because this drug has a strong affinity for fluids, it will swell in the intestine. The large bulk stimulates peristalsis. A full glass of fluid taken at the same time will help minimize the risk of esophageal obstruction or fecal impaction. Question 160. A nurse is caring for a client with heart failure. The healthcare provider orders a 2 gram sodium diet. What should the nurse include when explaining how a low salt diet helps achieve a therapeutic outcome? A. Allows excess tissue fluid to be excreted. B. Helps to control food intake and thus weight. C. Aids the weakened heart muscle to contract and improves cardiac output. D. Helps reduce potassium accumulation that occurs when sodium intake is high. The correct answer, A. Allows excess tissue fluid to be excreted. Rationale. A decreased concentration of extracellular sodium causes a decrease in the release of antidiuretic hormone, ADH. This leads to increased excretion of urine. Question 161. A client has surgery to repair a fractured right hip. 
Where should the nurse stand when assisting the client to ambulate? A. Behind the client. B. In front of the client. C. On the client's left side. D. On the client's right side. The correct answer, C. On the client's left side. Rationale. When ambulating a client, the nurse walks on the client's stronger or unaffected side. This provides a wide base of support and therefore increases stability during the phase of ambulation that calls for weight bearing on the affected side as the unaffected limb moves forward. Question 162. A preschool age child has been restricted to bed rest since admission to the hospital. As a response to improvement, the child becomes interested in playing. Based on the child's developmental level and activity restriction, what should the nurse provide? A. Television viewing time. B. Squeaky stuffed animals. C. Small farm animals and a little barn. D. Simple three or four piece wooden puzzles. The correct answer, C. Small farm animals and a little barn. Rationale. This allows an active preschooler to move within restrictions and encourages use of the imagination. Question 163. A newborn is RH positive, and the mother is RH negative. The infant is to receive an exchange transfusion. The nurse explains to the parents that their baby will receive RH negative blood because A. It is the same as the mother's blood. B. It is neutral and will not react with the baby's blood. C. The possibility of a transfusion reaction is eliminated. D. The red blood cells will not be destroyed by maternal anti-RH antibodies. The correct answer, D. The red blood cells will not be destroyed by maternal anti-RH antibodies. Rationale. Rh negative cells are not attacked by maternal antibodies in the infant's blood. Giving Rh positive cells will lead to further hemolysis. Question 164. An emergency tracheotomy is performed on a child with acute epiglottitis, and the child is receiving humidified air via a tracheotomy collar. When caring for this child, what early clinical manifestations of hypoxia should alert the nurse to suction the tracheotomy? A. Dyspnea and cyanosis. B. Agitation and diaphoresis. C. Restlessness and increase in pulse. D. Severe substernal retractions and strider. The correct answer, C. Restlessness and increase in pulse. Rationale. These are some of the first signs of hypoxia, the airway must be kept patent to promote oxygenation. Question 165. A nurse is caring for a client with a spinal cord injury during the immediate post-injury period. What is the primary focus of nursing care during this immediate phase? A. Inhibiting urinary tract infections. B. Preventing contract ears and atrophy. C. Avoiding flexion or hyperextension of the spine. D. Preparing the client for vocational rehabilitation. The correct answer, C. Avoiding flexion or hyperextension of the spine. Rationale. The priority of care at this time is to protect the spine from additional damage to the traumatized area while it heals. Question 166. Three days after birth, a breastfeeding newborn becomes jaundiced. The parents bring the infant to the clinic, and blood is drawn for an indirect serum bilirubin level. The test result is 12 mg per deciliter. The nurse explains that it is physiologic jaundice, a benign condition, which is caused by a immature liver function, b an inability to synthesize bile, c an increased maternal hemoglobin level. 
D-high hemoglobin with low hematocrit levels. The correct answer, A immature liver function. Rationale. Jaundice occurs because of the expected physiologic breakdown of fetal red blood cells and the inability of the newborn's immature liver to conjugate the resulting bilirubin. Breastfed neonates are more prone to physiologic jaundice because of diminished calorie and fluid intake in the three days before milk is produced. Question 167. The parents of a newborn who is receiving phototherapy ask a nurse why their baby's eyes are covered with eye patches. What information should the nurse consider before responding? A. They keep the eyes closed. B. Overstimulation from bright lights is reduced. C. They prevent injury to the conjunctiva and retina. D. Excessive rapid eye movements and anxiety are limited. The correct answer, C. They prevent injury to the conjunctiva and retina. Rationale. Eye patches are applied while receiving phototherapy to prevent drying of the conjunctiva, injury to the retina, and alterations in biorhythms. Question 168. A nurse is teaching sterile technique to a family member of a client who is to be discharged with a large abdominal wound that requires a dressing change twice a day. What does the family member do during a return demonstration that indicates further teaching is necessary? A. Sets the sterile field on the client's linens at the foot of the bed. B. Touches the outer inch of the sterile field when placing it on a flat surface. C. Checks expiration dates on the sterile packages before donning sterile gloves. D. Picks up wet gauze with sterile plastic forceps, holding the tips lower than the wrist. The correct answer, A sets the sterile field on the client's linens at the foot of the bed. Rationale. The field should be placed on a clean, dry table near the client. A client's bed surface may not be clean and the client's movements may cause the field to become contaminated. Question 169. An infant is diagnosed with hydrocephalus. Which assessment alerts the nurse to suspect increasing intracranial pressure? A. Sunken eyes. B. Projectile vomiting. C. Depressed fontanelles. D. Narrowing pulse pressure. The correct answer, B. Projectile vomiting. Rationale. Increased intracranial pressure exerts pressure on the vomiting center in the brain, resulting in projectile vomiting unrelated to feeding. Question 170. In the immediate postoperative period after a gastrectomy, the client's nasogastric tube is draining a light red liquid. For how long should the nurse expect this type of drainage? A. 1 to 2 hours. B. 3 to 4 hours. C 10 to 12 hours. D 24 to 48 hours. The correct answer, C 10 to 12 hours. Rationale. The trauma of surgery results in some seeping or oozing of blood into the remaining gastric area for 10 to 12 hours until coagulation takes place. Question 171. Which complication is avoided when a nurse administers a parenteral preparation of potassium slowly and cautiously? A. Acidosis. B. Cardiac arrest. C. Psychotic-like reactions. D. Edema of the extremities. The correct answer, B. Cardiac arrest. Rationale. Too rapid administration can cause hyperkalemia, which contributes to a long refractory period in the cardiac cycle, resulting in cardiac dysrhythmias and arrest. Question 172. A nurse is assessing a male newborn. 
which characteristics should alert the nurse to conclude that the newborn is a preterm infant. Select all that apply. A. Wrinkled, thin skin. B. Multiple sole creases. C. Small breast bud size. D. Presence of scrotal rugae. E. Pinna remaining flat when folded. The correct answers, A, C, and E. Rationale. A. Preterm newborns have little subcutaneous fat, the skin is wrinkled, and blood vessels and bony structures are visible. C. Breast bud size is small with underdeveloped nipples. E. Preterm infant's ears contain little cartilage and are very springy when folded, at term, the ears contain cartilage and the pinny are firm. Question 173. A nurse is caring for a client who is scheduled for a gastric bypass to treat morbid obesity. Which diet should the nurse teach the client to maintain because it will help minimize clinical manifestations of dumping syndrome? A. Low residue, bland diet. B. Small, frequent feeding schedule. C. Fluid intake less than half a quart. D. Low protein, high carbohydrate diet. The correct answer, B. Small, frequent feeding schedule. Rationale. Small feedings reduce the amount of bulk passing into the jejunum and therefore reduce the fluid that shifts into the jejunum. Question 174. A nurse is caring for a client in the evening after the client has had a below-the-knee amputation. What action should be implemented by the nurse? A. Elevate the foot of the bed. B. Assist the client out of bed to a chair. C. Have the client crutch walk in the room. D. Reapply the elastic bandage every two hours. The correct answer, A. Elevate the foot of the bed. Rationale. The residual limb is elevated for the first 24 hours after surgery to reduce edema and then is placed flat on the bed to prevent hip flexion contract ears. Question 175. A pregnant client complains of constipation. Which strategies should the nurse recommend? Select all that apply. A. Exercise regularly. B. Take a mild laxative before breakfast. C. Drink at least one caffeinated beverage daily. D. Add a few tablespoons of wheat bran to cereal at breakfast. E. Plan to have a bowel movement at the same time every day. The correct answers, A, D, and E. Rationale. One of the benefits of regular exercise is that it promotes peristalsis. D. High fiber foods promote peristalsis. E. Setting aside a specific time of day helps establish regular bowel habits. Question 176. A client with schizophrenia, paranoid type, is readmitted involuntarily to the hospital because family members state that he has threatened to harm them physically. When exploring feelings about the readmission, the client angrily shouts, You're one of them. Leave me alone. How should the nurse respond? A. Try not to be afraid. I will not hurt you. B. I can see you are upset. We can talk more later. C. I am not one of them, and I am here to help you. D. Your family and the staff are trying to help you. The correct answer, B. I can see you are upset. We can talk more later. Rationale. This statement acknowledges the client's feelings and offers as opportunity to talk in the future, this shows the nurse cares and is not abandoning the client. Pursuing the topic while the client is angry may result in an escalation of the client's anger, jeopardizing the nurse and others. 
Question 177. Shortly after giving birth, a client says she feels that she is bleeding. When checking the fundus, a nurse observes a steady trickling of blood from the vagina. What is the nurse's initial action? A. Call the healthcare provider. B. Check the blood pressure and pulse. C. Hold the fundus firmly and gently massage it. D. Explain that the trickling blood is a common occurrence. The correct answer, C. Hold the fundus firmly and gently massage it. Rationale. A relaxed uterus is the most frequent cause of bleeding in the early postpartum period. The uterus can be returned to a state of firmness via intermittent gentle fundal massage. Question 178. A postoperative client is diagnosed as having atelectasis. Which nursing assessment supports this diagnosis? A. Productive cough. B. Clubbing of the fingertips. C. Crackles at the height of inhalation. D. Diminished breath sounds on auscultation. The correct answer, D. Diminished breath sounds on auscultation. Rationale. Atelectasis refers to the collapse of alveoli, breath sounds over the area are diminished. Question 179. What is important nursing care for children with leukemia on chemotherapeutic protocols? A. Preventing physical activity. B. Checking their vital signs every two hours. C. Having them avoid contact with infected persons. D. Reducing unnecessary stimuli in their environment. The correct answer, C. Having them avoid contact with infected persons. Rationale. Chemotherapy and leukemia cause immunosuppression, low WBCs, thus increasing the risk for infection. Question 180. A client is receiving vincristine. What should the nurse expect the dietary plan to include to minimize the side effects of vincristine? A. Low in fat. B. High in iron. C. High in fluids. D. Low in residue. The correct answer, C. High in fluids. Rationale. A common side effect of vincristine is a paralytic ileus that results in constipation. Preventative measures include high-fiber foods and fluids that exceed minimum requirements. These will keep the stool bulky and soft, thereby promoting evacuation. Question 181. A nurse is caring for a child with a very low platelet count related to chemotherapy. The nurse should monitor this child's urine for the presence of which constituent? A. Protein. B. Glucose. C. Erythrocytes. D. Lymphocytes. The correct answer, C. Erythrocytes. Rationale. A low platelet count predisposes to bleeding, which may be evident in the urine. RBCs are seen microscopically in the sediment. Question 182. The parents of a child with leukemia ask the nurse why irradiation of the spine and skull is necessary. What is the most accurate response by the nurse? A. Radiation retards growth of cells in bone marrow of the cranium. B. This therapy decreases cerebral edema, preventing increased intracranial pressure. C. Leukemic cells may invade the nervous system, but the usual drugs are ineffective in the brain. D. Neoplastic drug therapy without radiation is effective in most cases, but this is a precautionary treatment. The correct answer, C. Leukemic cells may invade the nervous system, but the usual drugs are ineffective in the brain. Rationale. 
The protective blood-brain barrier initially screens leukemic cells from the central nervous system, CNS. However, in advanced stages, leukemic infiltration occurs. Chemotherapeutic agents, also screened out by the blood-brain barrier, are ineffective. Question 183. A nurse identifies that an older adult has not achieved the desired outcome from a prescribed proprietary medication. When assessing the situation, the client shares that the medication is too expensive and the prescription was never filled. What should the nurse do? A. Ask the pharmacist to provide a generic form of the drug. B. Encourage the client to acquire the medication over the internet. C. Inform the health care provider of the inability to afford the medication. D. Suggest that the client purchase insurance that covers prescription drugs. The correct answer, C. Inform the health care provider of the inability to afford the medication. Rationale. The health care provider needs to be aware of the reason for the client's lack of response to the medication so that an alternate treatment plan or financial assistance can be arranged to establish whether the client is eligible for assistance from any community, state, or federal programs or from the drug company. Question 184. During a routine prenatal visit, a client tells a nurse that she gets leg cramps. What condition does the nurse suspect and what suggestion is made to correct it? A. Hypercalcemia and tells her to avoid eating hard cheeses. B. Hypocalcemia and tells her to increase her intake of milk. C. Hyperkalemia and tells her to consult with her health care provider. D. Hypokalemia and tells her to increase her intake of green, leafy vegetables. The correct answer, B. Hypocalcemia and tells her to increase her intake of milk. Rationale. The most likely cause is a disturbance in the ratio of calcium to phosphorus, with the amount of serum calcium reduced and the serum phosphorus increased, milk and other dairy products are excellent sources of calcium. Question 185. A healthcare provider prescribes simvastatin, Zocor, 20 mg daily for elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels for a middle-aged female. Which is most important for the nurse to teach the client to do when initially taking this medication? A. Take the medication with breakfast. B. Have liver function tests twice a year. C. Wear sunscreen to prevent photosensitivity reactions. D. Inform the health care provider if becoming pregnant is desired. The correct answer, D. Inform the health care provider if becoming pregnant is desired. Rationale. Simvastatin, Zocor, is contraindicated in pregnancy because it is capable of causing fetal damage, teratogenic. It is a pregnancy category X teratogen. Question 186. What gross motor skills should the nurse expect a developmentally appropriate three-year-old child to perform? Select all that apply. A. Skipping on alternate feet. B. Riding alone on a small bicycle. C. Standing on one foot for a few seconds. D. Alternating the feet when walking upstairs. E. Jumping rope by lifting both feet simultaneously. The correct answer, C and D. Rationale. C. This can be expected, usually, it is accomplished by three years of age. D. Children at three years of age are able to walk up the stairs alternating the feet, they also can jump off the bottom step. Question 187. Methylphenidate, Ritalin has been prescribed for a 7-year-old child with attention deficit or hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, to be taken with meals. What rationale should the nurse provide for the parents about the timing of medication administration? A. 
Ritalin depresses the appetite. B. This will ensure proper absorption. C. It is an oral mucous membrane irritant. D. Children tend to forget to take it before meals. The correct answer, A. Ritalin depresses the appetite. Rationale. A side effect of methylphenidate, Ritalin, is anorexia, it should be given during or immediately after breakfast. Question 188. A client with acute respiratory distress syndrome is intubated and placed on a ventilator. What should the nurse do when caring for this client and the mechanical ventilator? A. Regulate the PEEP according to the rate and depth of the client's respirations. B. Deflate the cuff on the endotracheal tube for a few minutes every 1 to 2 hours. C. Assess the need for suctioning when the high pressure alarm of the ventilator is activated. D. Adjust the temperature of fluid in the humidification chamber, depending on the volume of gas delivered. The correct answer, C. Assess the need for suctioning when the high pressure alarm of the ventilator is activated. Rationale. The high pressure alarm signifies increased pressure in the tubing or the respiratory tract. Obstruction usually is caused by excessive secretions. Question 189. A client who has had thoracic surgery is admitted to the post anesthesia care unit, PACU. What should the nurse do after the chest tube is attached to a disposable plastic water seal drainage system? A. Ensure the security of the connections from the client to the drainage unit. B. Empty the drainage container and measure and record the amount once a day. C. Verify that there is vigorous bubbling in the wet suction control compartment. D. Check that the fluid level in the water seal compartment increases with expiration. The correct answer. A. Ensure the security of the connections from the client to the drainage unit. Rationale. The system must remain airtight, closed, to prevent collapse of the lung. Question 190. A client with schizophrenia has been experiencing hallucinations. During what client behaviors should the nurse expect the hallucinations to be more frequent? A. Trying to rest. B. Playing sports. C. Watching television. D. Interacting with others. The correct answer, A. Trying to rest. Rationale. Hallucinations occur most often when sensory stimulation is diminished because there is less competition for attention. Question 191. A client who had an organ transplant is receiving cyclosporin, GenGraph. For what should the nurse monitor to identify a serious adverse effect of cyclosporin? A. Skin for hirsutism. B. Stools for constipation. C. Heart rhythm for dysrhythmias. D. Creatinine level for an increase. The correct answer, D. Creatinine level for an increase. Rationale. A life-threatening effect of cyclosporin, GenGraph, Sandimmune, is nephrotoxicity. Therefore, creatinine and blood urea nitrogen, BUN, levels should be monitored. Question 192. During the first prenatal visit of a woman who is at 23 weeks gestation, the nurse discovers that the client has a history of pica. What is the most appropriate nursing action? A. Seek a psychologic referral. B. Explain the danger this poses to the fetus. C. Obtain a prescription for an iron supplement. D. Determine whether the diet is nutritionally adequate. The correct answer. D. Determine whether the diet is nutritionally adequate. Rationale. 
The primary concern for pregnant women who practice pica is that their diet is nutritionally inadequate. Nutritional guidance may be necessary based on this assessment. Question 193. During a prenatal visit, a client at 36 weeks gestation tells a nurse that she has painful, irregular contractions. What should the nurse recommend? A. Lie down until they stop. B. Time them for at least one hour. C. Walk around until they subside. D. Take one over-the-counter analgesic. The correct answer, C. Walk around until they subside. Rationale. Ambulation decreases irregular contractions, that is preparatory contractions, Braxton Hicks contractions. Question 194. A healthcare provider prescribes Losartan, Kozar, for a client. Which is the most important nursing action? A. Assess the client for hypokalemia. B. Ensure that the medication is ingested with food. C. Monitor the client's blood pressure during therapy. D. Teach that a missed dose can be doubled at the next scheduled time. The correct answer, C. Monitor the client's blood pressure during therapy. Rationale. Losartan, Kozar, is an antihypertensive. It blocks vasoconstrictor and aldosterone producing effects of angiotensin II at receptor sites. A lowering of the client's blood pressure reflects a therapeutic response and should be monitored frequently. Question 195. During the postpartum period a nurse identifies that a client's rubella titer is negative. What action should the nurse plan to take? A. Check for allergies to penicillin. B. Alert the staff in the newborn nursery. C. Assure the client that she has active immunity. D. Obtain a prescription for an immunization before discharge. The correct answer, D. Obtain a prescription for an immunization before discharge. Rationale. A negative rubella titer indicates no immunity. Immunizations are given safely during the immediate postpartum period. Question 196. An infant with hydrocephalus has a ventriculoperitoneal, VP, shunt surgically inserted. What nursing care is essential during the first 24 hours after this procedure? A. Medicating the infant for pain. B. Placing the infant in a high fowler position. C. Positioning the infant on the side that has the shunt. D. Monitoring the infant for increasing intracranial pressure. The correct answer, D. Monitoring the infant for increasing intracranial pressure. Rationale. The shunt may obstruct, leading to accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, and increased intracranial pressure. Question 197. An older adult is hospitalized for weight loss and dehydration because of nutritional deficits. What should the nurse consider when caring for this client? A. Financial resources usually are unrelated to nutritional status. B. An older adult's daily fluid intake must be markedly increased. C. The client's diet should be high in carbohydrates and low in proteins. D. The nutritional needs of an older adult are unchanged except for a decreased need for calories. The correct answer, D. The nutritional needs of an older adult are unchanged except for a decreased need for calories. Rationale. A well-balanced diet with fewer calories because of decreased metabolism is suggested for older adults. Question 198. A healthcare provider orders peak and trough levels of an antibiotic for a client who is receiving vancomycin IV piggyback, IVPB. 
When should a blood sample be obtained to determine a peak level of the antibiotic? A. Anytime it is convenient for the client. B. Between 30 and 60 minutes after a dose. C. Halfway between two doses of the drug. D. At 30 minutes before the medication is administered. The correct answer, B. Between 30 and 60 minutes after a dose. Rationale. Because the drug was just administered, the blood level of the drug will be at its highest. Question 199. A nurse is teaching a client who has arthritis about the steroid medication prescribed by the healthcare provider. Which client's statement about why it is important to take steroid medication at mealtimes indicates that the teaching was effective? A. The presence of food will enhance the medication's absorption. B. Taking it with meals serves as a reminder to take the medication. C. Food will help decrease the gastric irritation effect of the medication. D. The acid medium in the presence of food makes the medication more effective. The correct answer, C. Food will help decrease the gastric irritation effect of the medication. Rationale. The presence of food limits the irritating effect of steroids on the gastric mucosa. Question 200. What is the priority nursing intervention on admission of a prima gravita in labor? A. Monitoring the fetal heart rate. B. Asking the client when she ate last. C. Obtaining the client's health history. D. Determining if the membranes have ruptured. The correct answer, A. Monitoring the fetal heart rate. Rationale. Determining fetal well-being supersedes all other measures, if the fetal heart rate, FHR, is absent or is persistently decelerating, immediate intervention is required. <laughs>